Well, good morning and welcome to our Sunday service. My name is Nigel. I'm one of the occasional preachers here and youth leader here at All Saints Church. And it's my pleasure to welcome you. Uh, if you are joining us for the first time and want to know more about what we do here, then please do get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, this morning's reading is uh, brought to us by Peter. Sheila will be leading us in prayers and the lovely David will be giving us the talk this morning. Um, as some of you are aware, this week marks the start of Lent. Uh, this is the time of year where the church allows space for us to prepare our hearts and minds in the celebration and the glorious resurrection of Christ at Easter. Now, due to ongoing restrictions, the church building will remain closed for Sunday services. Uh, but for each Wednesday uh, throughout Lent, the church will be open for a short period of time between 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. for private prayer and meditation. Um, we'd love to see you, but please, in line with government recommendations, please, please do wear a face mask, keep social distancing, and where possible, use your hand gels on entering and leaving the building. There will be stations there for you. We have other online activities, including uh, Cafe Church and... Um, Cake and Company, uh, sorry, Honeycomb Cafe and Cake and Company. And if you do re require any prayer requests, then please do get in touch via our Facebook page or via email. We'd love to pray for you. This morning's prayer. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, fasted for 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet did not give in to sin. Give us grace to control ourselves in obedience to your Spirit. And as you know our weaknesses, so may we know your power to save us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns in you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. from Mark chapter 1 verses 9 to 13 and Mark on this occasion writes, writes about the time that John baptized Jesus and then Satan tempted Jesus into the wilderness. Then one day Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John there in the Jordan River. 
The moment Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove. Then a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Immediately the Holy Spirit urged Jesus into the desert. There, for forty days, alone, except for desert animals, he was subjected to Satan's temptation to sin. But afterwards, the angel came and looked after him. This is the word of the Lord. In my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. In the good old days, I sometimes went shopping with my wife and daughters. Occasionally, I would stand outside the fitting room trying to look nonchalant and relaxed with all the time in the world. But as I waited patiently, I asked myself, why am I really here? It might be that a husband and father is towed to the shops because it means a lot to be affirmed. Yes, you look lovely in that dress, as long as it is said with genuine affection. When you come home from the hairdresser in the good old days when they were open, it's good if others notice. Husbands, please note. If you have worked hard, words of encouragement are welcome. A good boss affirms his or her employees so that they feel valued. Some of us look back with thankfulness to teachers who inspired and helped us on life's journey. Church is also a place where we can strengthen each other's self-esteem with praise and encouragement. It means a lot to know that you are welcome, especially if you are a newcomer. We need to know that others care about us, that we are valued and accepted, not only for the things we do, but more importantly for who we are. A mother's warming hands give comfort. Being firmly held offers a sense of security. Eye contact often speaks more than words. I remember someone on Desert Island Disc being interviewed. He was asked what was good about his childhood. Being confident in myself, being affirmed by my parents was his response. A parent who gives strenuous attention to their child provides an abundance of self-belief which can last a lifetime. Without a father's or a mother's basic, yes, you are loved no matter what, life can be an endless search for acceptance. Today's gospel speaks about the affirmation Jesus received from his heavenly father. Those words helped sustain Jesus until the last drop of his cup of suffering was emptied. As Jesus came out of the water, the heavens opened, the Spirit of God descended like a dove, and according to Matthew's Gospel, a voice proclaimed, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. This was addressed to the crowds who witnessed Jesus' baptism. It is the Father's recognition and acknowledgement that God's purpose will soon be fulfilled. It is the joining of together of earth and heaven and heaven to earth. It is a joining together of divinity and humanity. It is a joining together of the created and the creator. It is the affirmation that in Jesus, God stands in solidarity with all humanity. Those who were standing around heard the voice saying, this is my beloved son. It was the stamp of God's approval upon the 30 years he had spent in Nazareth, those quiet years of Jesus' life, about which scripture is largely silent. But when Jesus heard it, heard it, according to Mark's gospel, it was, you are my beloved son. It was addressed to him directly as an assurance and a security for him. You must not think of Jesus as being automatically empowered against all obstacles and threats and fears. He was a man, that is what the scripture says. He was like us. He was assaulted with every malicious threat that humans ever feel. He felt like us, and he needed to be treated as we need to be treated. He needed the assurance of the Father's recognition of who he really was. 
psychologists tell us that if we do not know who we are, we are we have a little poise and confidence. We have to know who we are before we have security in our speech and actions. This is what God has given to Jesus, the security of knowing that he is his beloved son. And this is what he says to us. The glorious of this gospel, the glory of this gospel message is that God is ready to treat us exactly as he treated Jesus. Every one of us ought to say to ourselves every morning, this is what my father is saying to me. You are my beloved son or daughter in whom I am well pleased. That is what gives us a sense of security and identity, a place to stand, which means we can be calm and unthreatened when the storms gather around us. This is where it comes from. There is no other source. That is why Jesus could begin his ministry with this sense of assurance from his father that God would be with him no matter what would happen to him. Jesus was baptized in the life of humanity so that we might be baptized into the life of the Creator. It does not mean that life is no longer difficult or that problems will never occur. They will, of course. There will be more upheavals in our world, in your life and in mine. It means rather that when the difficulties happen, we can trust that God is on our side, present, standing alongside us among the turmoil. It means that we can trust that God is for us and that God will offer a way forward. He always does. Although we hear in the gospel what took place before and after the baptism of Jesus, the text doesn't pay much attention to the baptism itself. It focuses on what happened right after the baptism when Jesus stood up and prayed. We are told, though, that the heaven opened. We get no detail about what kind of phenomenon this might have been, but it must have been a special moment of divine presence, just what Jesus needed to begin his public ministry. In his baptism, Jesus was named my beloved. In his baptism, Jesus was claimed as one who pleased God. In his baptism, Jesus heard the voice that each of us longs to hear. Isaiah wrote, Of the one who calls you by name and says you are mine, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. You are precious in my sight, and I love you. These words will surely all be, these words we surely all long to hear. The same voice that spoke to Jesus some 2,000 years ago is not silent today. For God is always speaking to us if we have ears to hear. God's voice comes to us in a variety of ways. Silence and meditation and prayer. In the written word, through other people, in the beauty of creation and through music. Preachers often try to find a different way to communicate, something that will catch your attention, something that will make a difference to your lives, something that will make this time together worthwhile turning up, something that you've never heard before that would encourage you to come back again. But we also like familiarity. We listen to a song or hymn we love over and over until we memorize it. We can watch great movies over and over again, thanks to the internet, until we almost can re reenact the classic scenes ourselves. Our children and grandchildren want the same bedtime story read over every night. It is the same with the story of faith. I need the same old story that's been told from the beginning, communicated though in a fresh way. I need to hear what was heard some 2,000 years ago, which was spoken when Jesus came out of the River Jordan. That ancient affirmation is made new every time we hear it. The father's affirmation of his son must have meant so much to Jesus with all that was about to happen to him. With our limited human insights, we can't understand the mystery of the Trinity. But the nature of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is perfect love. A love that believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. A love that never ends. When the Father's voice sounded from heaven, the love of God was affirmed. 
Immediately after his baptism, Jesus was driven into the wilderness. We can never escape or avoid the wilderness. Like Jesus, we must go through it. We must face temptation. Yet we never go there alone. The angels that minister to Jesus will be there for us. Remember who you are is their message. You are a beloved of God. You are a beloved daughter of God. You are a beloved son of God. You are one with whom he is well pleased. They remind us, they encourage us, and they reassure us. That is the way through the wilderness of life. We are reminded again and again, I am a beloved child of God with whom he is well pleased. Let that become our wilderness refrain. Let those words fill our minds and dwell in our hearts. The truth of those words will enable us to return from the wilderness to face the future. So may we know God's affirmation in our lives as we seek to serve him in the world. Amen.
As Jesus resisted temptation by the devil in the wilderness, help us reflect on his faithfulness to God, his rejection of worldly values, and hold those thoughts in our hearts throughout Lent and beyond. Lord, may Lent be a time of inward searching that makes us more able to look with compassion at the needs of the world. As your disciples teach us about spiritual discipline in our relationship with you, thank you, Lord, for those bleak experiences when being confronted with ourselves make us realise our need of you. Lord, your presence at all times means so much to us, and most particularly during lockdown. We are all affected in some way, but we pray especially for those who have contracted the virus and for those who have lost loved ones. We thank you for the NHS, the scientists and all frontline workers. Keep them safe. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, thank you for watching this morning. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, however you decide to mark this time of Lent, we wish you and your families a safe and blessed time. Uh, we look forward to seeing you and joining us again soon. Take care. Oh, All Saints Church, Church Prayer. God of Mission. Who alone brings growth to your church. Send your the Holy Spirit to give. give. Vision to, to our planning. Wisdom to our actions. Joy, Joy to our worship. And power to our witness. Help our church, All Saints, to grow in numbers. In, in spiritual, spiritual commitment, commitment to you. you. And in service to our local community of West Yule. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.